What's going on guys? Welcome to our Q&A. So we asked you guys to ask us a bunch of questions. This happened about a month ago at the end of Summer Flex. Um, for those of you who don't know, we actually did a live stream that took place. Check out the card on the top right here. We put it on our backup channel. Um, and that was just so much fun. We planned, we planned on doing a lot of these questions in that video, but you guys were doing live stream and asking us so many questions, so we didn't get to any of them. So here it is. Question number one. All right, I get the pleasure of kicking this little party off. We got 33 pages of questions. We're gonna answer every single one, put the best ones in the video. So we're gonna try to get through all of them. We're gonna try to do them quick, so we are actually just gonna pass the camera around, do them right away. We're not even gonna think about them, so we'll let it go. Uh, first one is how did you guys get into the fitness scene? I don't know if this means how did Colossus get in or how did we get in personally. But I'll just say myself personally, I started out in high school lifting for hockey fitness class that I had. I started realizing that I was kind of strong, just kind of learning what to do. It's funny, I didn't even work chest and stuff because I didn't want, I thought like I'd get too muscular, which is really weird considering like everything now. And it's kind of humbling to look at your roots and really interesting. Uh, next one, another quick one is how to properly use creatine. So creatine can be loaded if you want. It's basically going to bond. If you load it, it will saturate your cells, your muscles. But with that, you can get some stomach discomfort, so it comes at a risk. So if you just progressively have three to five grams a day of a dose over usually about 10 days, you should be able to saturate the muscles in the same regard. So there's really no need to load unless you're loading for a specific event or time frame. Gra what are your go-to songs to get you fired up for a workout? Um, I'm gonna have to say anything Eminem will have me absolutely fired up. And then Josh just introduced me to a song called It's Jima. Uh, we're gonna play it right now. It's Jima! On the water squat! Next question, uh, will a physique competition be coming for you guys in the future? Um, we plan on doing classic physique, not exactly sure when, but maybe within the next year or two. Uh, we're just finishing off with powerlifting and then we're just gonna really be focusing on the growth stage. We have a series coming up called, called Grow, which we're super excited to take you guys along. That's gonna be a lean bulk and then from there we're gonna really decide on what we're gonna do um, physique slash powerlifting wise. All right, we got someone from Toronto asking, what is the reason that we believe we provide the perfect online coaching? So I don't think any service or product can be perfect, but the reason I think it is close to perfect is because we always make it better. If you notice on all of our spreadsheets or workouts or everything we do, even our eBooks or whatever, everything we supply you with is always updated. So there's always a version like 3.1, 3.4. So we're always updating our resources as well as updating our knowledge as coaches, as long our experiences so we work with over multiple hundreds on hundreds of people now and you kind of it becomes like an art form and you get attuned to it and because of that with just the need to want to do better and to want to learn ourselves and want to help other people and having all these like case case specific examples we have really got to where we need to be and we find we're very effective and everyone's hitting their goals and that's the best thing at the end of the day oh, okay Next question we got asked, who is your favorite YouTube prankster? I'm gonna have to say, I don't know if he's a prankster, but Epic 5 TV, I just find everything that he does, like going up to the people is just hilarious. Earlier I ran out of toilet paper and I used a toothbrush. Okay, why are you stopping and talking to me, bro? That's like, why would you tell me that you ran out of toilet paper to wipe your ass? Dude? Hey, what's wrong with her? Um, and then aside from that, there's another guy who actually used one of my comments in his video. Uh, and it's called, I'll post it actually right here. Uh, it's called, um, That Was Epic. The next question we got is, is Bradley Martin natural? Is Bradley Martin natural? What? <laughs> what is your favorite back exercise? Honestly, I love the deadlift, but I'm gonna have to say lat pull down. I just love doing so many different variations and just like, doing them a lot. <laughs> what is the best protein for losing weight? Protein is a nutrient, protein, fats, carbs, I say this a lot, but I'll keep saying it. Protein will not make you lose weight. Protein is just a supplement you can add to your diet to hit your macros, to have more reflecting macros to fit a weight loss schedule with your macronutrient programming. So there really is no best answer, but proteins overall, I really do like EHP. I just find it's got a good dose of protein. It's only got a couple carbs and like, one gram fat. So overall, I'm actually very happy because it tastes so good. But use whatever you guys like and whatever tastes good to you. Further, we got asked if protein powders have any negative effects in the short or long term. 
Once again, it's a nutrient that's derived from milk, so you don't have to worry. It's nothing special or magical. It's just, it is what it is. It's completely fine for you. It's just like having a source of carbs or a source of fats. Are fat burners worth using? I'd say no. If you don't have your nutrition right, I'd say yes, if you do. And a um, little plug here, my favorite kind is EHP Labs Pink Grapefruit. It tastes absolutely freaking amazing. Next one from Cockermouth, England. <laughs> We all set goals for our physique for a year or so in advance, but where do you see your physique and goal setting in five years? Personally, I'd like to just get a lot stronger. I'd really one day like to get like a 475 plus Wilkes, maybe 500 Wilkes naturally. I'd like to get as big as I can and just keep making those slow gains. I'd like to just keep winning a couple of comps here and there, get a ton of clients, really grow all this. and quite happy with that. All right, so next question. This guy's a decently small guy, trying to put on size, um, and he has an extremely busy schedule. Bro, I've been there, I know what it's like. One thing I really like to do, especially on Sunday night, is I try to get my entire week in check. I know Josh does the same kind of thing where um, just kind of organize the entire week ahead, getting ready, like some days on a Wednesday, things may be different, so I just plan, okay, when am I gonna hit the gym? I know some things kind of do interfere with your life, but just kind of having everything laid out is just like such a good feeling and it'll allow you to be accountable. So even like on a Sunday night, I'll do my entire week prep uh, of food and that just kind of, helps me stay on schedule and really reach my goal. So I really recommend trying to do that. Next question, how do you stay motivated? This is a complex but simple question. So motivation stems from many, many things. But I find I can be most motivated when I'm productive and I have my consistencies in life. So like you said, that routine and scheduling is necessary to motivation. Otherwise you'll kind of slip into like hedonistic things like chilling or eating too much, this and that. But, so by defining rigid lines for yourself, I find it keeps me propelled to my goal alongside effective goal setting. That's like the really simplified. I can make a 20 minute video on this. Let's do it then. Let's commit, fire me north. Get it, get it, get it. Who is your number one fitness YouTuber that you guys would love to train with? Oh my God, this is a tough question. Currently, I'm gonna have to say, I've been really enjoying, there's two specific um, YouTubers, and I'm gonna have to say Nick Bear. As well as Travis S. They have amazing content, go follow them if you haven't already. Uh, we should be able to arrange something within the next year, a nice workout or a collab, um, you could say. And then on top of that, Omar Issa. I am the Green Ranger. <laughs> and Brandon Campbell. I'd love to train with them, get some heavy deadlifts in. And uh, yeah, what about you, Josh? Anything else? I second it, bro. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see Scott again soon, yeah. too. Yeah, Scott Herman. Some of the other boys. And yeah, can we get... There's just a ton of good YouTubers. <laughs> I could go on for days, but those are the specifics. This one we get asked a ton. How did you get sponsored and how did you get sponsored by EHP Labs? So at the time we were actually on my protein. Things are good with them. They have really good subs and everything. We were in New York at the time. We got an email from EHP. So they actually contacted us and we read up on them and got to try the products and we really fell in love with their products. And that's kind of how that worked. But a lot of sponsorship, like you can apply and stuff, but unfortunately if you're the one applying, you're not really gonna get the good end of the table. So it's kind of tough in that route. Like we used to try applying when we were a lot smaller. And I would honestly just focus on growth before you worry about getting a bunch of sponsorships. Like even us, we turn down a lot of sillier sponsorships or things we don't believe in because we'd rather just be sponsored by one or two companies that we really firmly believe in and that believe in us so that you kind of have like a give take relationship there as opposed to just someone who you're just throwing a code out in every video. You want more than that. So that's something to keep in mind and something to work towards. We ain't kidding here, boy. There's a lot. Next question, how many times a week should one hit core? I think a lot of people like to overdo it with this one. Abs are a muscle group just like anything else, so we like to do it two to three times per week. What are my top five leg exercises? You can't beat the squat, that's number one. Number two is stiff leg deads. They're crazier Romanian deads, more or less the same with slight differences. Those two take king. Next on, I find I always, always love the staples 
the go-to staples of quad extension and hamstring curl. I really like them. Quad extension are not the best if you have knee pain, but I'm pretty good in that front. So those four are definitely up there. And then lastly, I'd have to say I like seated calves because you really feel a burn and you can just decimate that muscle, get short rest and keep hitting it. How can I increase muscle mass in my calf area while on a bulk? Honestly, I would tell you if I knew, but I have small calves, so yeah. Anybody that was good. No, I'm just kidding guys. I'd highly recommend eating more and just hitting your calves more frequently within the week. How do we find our mood changes when dieting? I find this is very case specific per person. So some people will get ultra moody, ultra fast. I can't say I changed that much. I guess you get a little more irritated when you're hungry. That's a whole hangry thing, but I eat a Snickers and I'm okay. <laughs> From New York, we got someone who says they're a competitive Dragon Boat athlete for Team Ontario for about two years, but they haven't been active in the sport for nine months, and they want to know how long with the proper coaching do we think we could get them ready to a good athletic physique. So this is very case specific to the individual. We do everything at a healthy rate, but we kind of push the maxes that we believe are appropriate per person for weight gain or weight loss. But usually you can build, you can get back to a pretty good point as long as you're only like 15 or so percent body fat in 8 to 12 weeks and that's why we've kind of structured our programming around that. 12 weeks you can get a really good cut going. You might not get comp ready but you can do some damage in 12 weeks. Somebody asked what are your favorite sports? I'm gonna have to say okay hockey will always be number one for me and this this doesn't include bodybuilding or powerlifting so hockey um, I have grown to really enjoy football. Josh kind of got me into it. You like cricket too, right? No. <laughs> and then uh, and then baseball. I used to play baseball, so those are my top three. What about you? I have to be completely honest. Baseball bores the heck out of me. I hate watching it. I hate playing it. I really just don't like it. I know these people aren't going to agree with me, but that's I, I like football a lot. I just think there's so many cool disciplines. I really like uh, like combat sports, like MMA and stuff like that, boxing, where because I find there's like a lot of rhythm, whereas there's also a lot of athleticism. Those are probably my tops right now, but football definitely overall. Hockey too. Hockey's I. It's more fun to play than watch now. I don't know. I've been hockeyed out. <laughs> These don't just have to be about fitness, right? Someone said, and that's cool too. It's kind of fun to hear other things. What is our favorite type of car? So favorite type of car, uh, I think it's tough. Uh, I think more so than cars, trucks are really cool. You can mod them really sick, that's fun. But past that, let's change this to what is our dream car, because you guys are both probably interested. I have to say my dream like supercar would have to be an R8, whereas my dream like luxury car would probably be like Maserati, Gran Torino. Turismo, sorry, they're really sick. They look classy, so I'm working towards it one day. <clears throat> oh, Mustang, pal. Uh, no, I, li I really, you know what? Okay, Mustang would be like a very achievable um, short, -term, short term goal, and I think that's GT, bro. Yeah, Mustang GT. I think that's something I will definitely be getting uh, within the near future, and it's not like anything like Six ridiculously, months. yeah. <laughs> Six months, <laughs> not anything, anything like out of reach. But um, honestly, I've been really liking the uh, the Corvette Z06. I don't know what it is. It's just like ridiculously fast, and it's not like crazy expensive, and it just looks really sweet. Do I like living in Canada? I'd say it's pretty good here. It's pretty decent. We don't got crazy political debates or anything going on. It's super mellow and linear, and it's a chill place to reside. Fortunately, our weather is insane. We get every extreme of weather, hot, cold, moderate, just like freakish degrees. So the weather gets very monotonous and it's tough, but overall it's a pretty sweet place. Toronto's really blowing up, so it's a good place to live. I'm a female who wants to start bodybuilding. What is the best way to get you supplements? <laughs> That's the next question. Um, honestly, I'd go about it uh, just like we actually made a video on our top five supplements and this will apply to absolutely everyone. It's gonna be a card in the top right, right there. So check that one out. That's pretty impressive that you got the right, bro. I know, usually I'm like, right. So, I got it. Um, we're turning left, right? No, we're going to the right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, left. To the right, to the right. <laughs> What is the best protein you could eat for your lunch snacks? Chicken. It's a really lean meat. Also lean ham, I guess, are probably the top two. Would you recommend fasted cardio in a second workout later in the day of mainly weightlifting and stretching? Or add on to one workout if I was looking 
to burn fat and cut? Honestly, for this question, I think it really more depends on your lifestyle. If you wanna do the morning cardio and then go later at night to do the weights, that's fine. But for me, I personally like to go to the gym once a day, so I would just do them together. But like I said, it really doesn't make that big of a difference whether you split it up or not. So this is not a favorable answer to a question, but someone asked, where do we find the best workout stuff is? So unfortunately, I hate to say it, but a lot of these smaller gym-based companies just won't produce stuff that's as good as your bigger brands like Reebok, Adidas, and Nike. So a lot of these smaller brands, because they don't have the budgets to really work on R&D of their products, I've wasted a lot of money buying things from these smaller to bigger fitness companies that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. So I just find the best route to go is with the major brands. And then there's some smaller niche brands that we really like, like even Alpha we like wearing along. We find their stuff is really good, but overall I'd be very weary of a lot of these kinds of places. And that's why with our shirts, we really took time with the little budget we had to make sure that they're perfect for what they are. Shameless plug. These Nike joggers are extremely nice. Bro, backups. Oh yeah, he's got them too. Backups. Jeez. All right, we out of here. Thanks for chilling with us. Uh, if you want to see another video, I don't know if this is part two or part one. It depends how Kyle edited it. Uh, hit that thumbs up. If we get over 250, we'll fire up another Q&A. Peace. Thanks for entering, everyone. We gonna get a donut. Oh, would you look at that? Just look at it. Just this. look at it. Just look at it. You know what this makes me want to say? Look at it. Then just go out.